Canon's been dogged by overheating since the release of the Canon EOS R5 in July 2020. But a recent patent application shows that they may have come up with an innovative way to dissipate heat. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news and rumors. So you want an active cooling system inside your Canon camera? Well, Keith at Northlight Images discovered a Canon patent application today, US patent 2022-02-64767. The patent describes ways of using a magnetic cooling fluid to keep the camera cool. And as the title of this video infers, the patent application talks about using a magnetic field to circulate the fluid, keeping the camera cool while reducing noise and vibration. And who else better to describe this patent application from Canon about magnetic cooling and its implications than Keith Cooper himself of Northlight Images. Keith pays very careful attention to Canon patent applications. Keith, over to you. New patent from Canon, or I should say a patent application at the USPTO. It's a patent application, which is not the same as an actual granted patent and is not the same as a product, very definitely not. It's where companies lay down ideas and stake a claim to them. This one covers the removal of heat from hot areas of your camera to areas where you can freely dissipate the heat. So the classic problem, um, you have your sensor and this area getting hot. You have other parts of the camera where you could shunt that heat off to and you could push it out with a fan or something like that. Now, the classic idea of having a heat sink on the back is one thing that takes the heat away. But if you use a fan, you can get noise, you can get vibration. Definitely a problem for video use. Uh, less so perhaps for myself because I'm still a shooter, but I do appreciate it's a, a problem. So the Canon patent application. It uses a liquid cooling system, much like in your car, where you have a liquid that goes from hot areas to cold areas. Now, you can just rely on the heat just to move the liquid around, but it doesn't work very well if the camera's turned upside down, if you're moving, if you're doing stuff. Basically, you want an active pumping system. Well, the problem with pumping this liquid around is that the pump can produce vibrations. That's where this patent comes in. The liquid that's forced around is a magnetic liquid. Now, have a look on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find people doing tricks with magnetic liquids and making them do various tricks and stuff. You can force it around a tube by applying a magnetic field. And that's what this patent does. It has a magnetic field that's created and that magnetic field forces the liquid through the hot part of the camera, picks up heat, takes it through, dumps it through into a colder part of the camera. Now, what you can do is have that colder part of the camera in the bottom here, down where the batteries tend to go in this design here, and you've moved the heat away from here to there, and there are no moving parts apart from the liquid. There's nothing to pump it around. So there's nothing to generate any noise. It's a very effective method. Now you might think, well, there are already things called heat pipes. Why not use heat pipes? Well, heat pipes do get used to shunt heat about inside cameras, but they're typically not aimed at this sort of recirculation system. The heat pipe has its own recirculation in it. If you're curious about that, have a look on Wikipedia. Great explanation of how heat pipes work. But this particular one, nice trick about it, it's taken the heat over to the far corner of the camera where we can even put in a little radiator and a fan. So you've got still a fan, so it needs to be a pretty quiet fan, but instead of having it round here, you've got it in a sort of chamber off to one side. Now, remember patent applications are only ideas and the examples you see in them are sort of suggested implementations of these ideas. But um, it's an interesting one and it's one of the first times I've seen something like a magnetic fluid used for this purpose. So have a read of the patents. They're not terribly readable, but uh, have a read of it if you want to see some more information and some ideas of it. And uh, who knows, we may well see it in the camera at some point. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. And for those of you who don't know who Keith Cooper is, he's actually the editorial owner and director of the aptly named YouTube channel, Keith Cooper. And on Keith Cooper, he focuses on photography and printers. Although if you do check out Northlight Images, he does have a page that does focus on Canon rumors. So please do me a favor, a way of thanking Keith Cooper for appearing on my channel. Go visit his YouTube channel and like and subscribe. Now I want to focus on some of the key points that Keith brought up. 
One being that this is a new thermal system that we haven't seen in the Stills Hybrid camera yet, and is most likely something that we could see in upcoming cameras like the Canon EOS R1, the R3 Mark II, or even the R5 Mark II. And what's significant here is that we have a durable, a more active cooling system, or a cooling system that does a much better job of channeling heat, shall I say. If we look at the current system of the Canon EOS R5, it does a rather poor job of channeling heat away. And you can actually purchase for $400 parts and services where you can actually put in a new copper heat sink that takes heat away from the image processor and the sensor to the chassis of the camera. And what that really allows you to do is be able to record unlimited 8K RAW inside a studio without any overheating whatsoever. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, with firmware 1.6, you can do that as well. But this just further improves the thermal architecture of the camera. So Canon was listening. When Canon released the camera in July of 2020, and just after they made their announcement, Peter McKinnon, one of their ambassadors, said, yes, this camera overheats. And I kind of picked up on that. And at the time, I really got taken to task for even bringing this up and how it could impact sales. But I thought it was important. And a lot of you did too. There was a lot of adverse press. People were putting these cameras inside freezers, inside fridges, and recording, and the camera was still overheating at around 20 to 25 minutes. Now, several firmware updates later, we have a better calculation, a better algorithm for, well, determining when the camera's getting too hot. It hasn't improved the architecture in any way whatsoever. And what this architecture does, this magnetic cooling system, it improves the architecture. It's able to dissipate that heat a whole lot quicker without any noise, without any vibrations. And that's a big deal, especially if you're shooting video. Now the tilt -a fan and other fans, they attach onto the back and they can cause vibration. And as these fans get older, what generally happens with fans is vibration can start to sneak in and you can start to create problems. Band-Aid solutions are great workarounds, but nothing beats a solid architecture designed from the ground up. So where are we likely to see this? Now I mentioned on the thumbnail that this is something we could very much see in the Canon EOS R1. Remember this patent application was published today. And as far as using fluid cooling systems and computers, using heat pipes and all that sort of stuff, this isn't new. But using a magnetic cooling fluid system in such a small body in a stills hyper camera, that is. And seeing this technology come out in the Canon EOS R1, well, it would certainly be groundbreaking unless of course somebody beats them to the punch. And as far as the Canon EOS R3 Mark II or the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, I think these cameras could very much see the same type of cooling system. And this is really good news. This shows that Canon is taking the overheating very seriously. And this means that we could start to see more aggressive video resolutions and frame rates in upcoming cameras. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, go ahead and subscribe, but make sure you choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video, you'll get notified by YouTube so you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. Oh, and one last thing too, please do check out Keith Cooper's website, his YouTube channel, Keith Cooper, and like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Keith, for participating in this video. We'll see you all very soon.